This is the first of a two-part series where I'll be discussing every single major new for 2021 coaster that we can anticipate opening this year. 2020 was supposed to be a remarkable year for the amusement industry. Tons of parks around the globe were ready to build and open new roller coasters that could potentially bring people from all around the world to their park. But then the COVID-19 pandemic dropped a bomb on so many of our plans to travel and more importantly ruined the opportunity of parks wanting to raise their attendance numbers. Instead, we got attendance caps that would basically make the opening of these multi-million dollar coasters irrelevant. Yes, it would still be an important part of the park's history either way, but rather than getting more people through the gates, they got less and spent a stupid amount of money in the meantime. While a select few parks did choose to go through with opening their new rides in 2020, most of them postponed the additions to next year where they hope attendance caps are lifted and where they seek improvement in their new attendance numbers. Now in 2021, we are potentially looking at the greatest year for new roller coasters in history. I say this because along with many 2020 projects being pushed over, we also have coasters that were meant to open in 2021. Now I will say, if COVID is still a problem by summer, then we could have coasters from 2021 postponed to 2022, and even coasters from 2020 pushed back a second time. As of now though, there have been very few parks that have gone through with doing that. I personally think that the second half of 2021 will be, maybe not normal, but a lot more comfortable than what we've been faced with in 2020. So in my opinion, 2021 really will be an incredible year for roller coasters, whether we're faced with COVID for a majority of it or or not. In this video, we will be taking a look at literally all of them that are major. In other words, no kitty coasters and no ordinary family coasters will be talked about, but virtually everything else will be, so this is going to be a very long two-part series. Before we begin, I'd like to ask you guys to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. All of you who choose to do so contribute to my motivation to make these videos and also are simply appreciated greatly. And also, before we completely get into the swing of things, there were a couple of honorable mentions I wanted to talk about. First of all, there are three coasters that were supposed to be opening in 2021 that are being posted to 2022 and also a coaster from 2020 that is being postponed a whole two years. These coasters are Aquaman Power Wave at Six Flags Over Texas, Tron Light Cycle Power Run at Disney's Magic Kingdom, Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind at Epcot, and the RMC Jersey Devil Clone at Six Flags Magic Mountain. I'm sure a couple more coasters will follow suit, but for now those are the only four that we know of that will be pushed back all the way through until 2022. And there are four other coasters that I wanted to talk about, all for different reasons. First one is Fly at Fantasialand, which did open in 2020 after several years of uncertainty in regards to opening. I feel like not everyone is aware of this, so I just wanted to point it out. That way I get no comments asking where Fly is on this list. Her Splash at Edaville Family Theme Park in Massachusetts is an ENF water coaster that has also had a lot of uncertainty regarding its opening. It's been sitting there ready to open for years, but simply put, nothing has happened lately and I'm sure COVID isn't helping with that. The SNS 40 Freespin going to King's Dominion is also a coaster many are anticipating to open in 2021, but in my opinion, I feel like people aren't thinking hard enough to why that makes no sense. Their 2020 attraction, Coconut Shores, is being postponed to 2021 already, so why would they add two new things that year? It makes no sense to me, and even though track is on site, I really think that's meant to open in 2022. Also, Lightning Rod at Dollywood is getting a bunch of RMC iBox track next year, and this slight conversion isn't enough of a change to call it a new coaster, but it will hopefully smooth out the ride and make it more reliable. Now that we have all that out of the way, let's really get into the list. First up is Abyssus at Energylandia in Poland, which is going to be the world's first Vekoma Shockwave Plus. This coaster model is a longer version of the Vekoma Shockwave that we'll talk about more in the second video. Vekoma really has had an incredible change in ride quality recently, and Abyssus is no exception. I think this ride is going to be amazing and easily one of the best multi-launch coasters, if not launch coasters, in the world. All Speeds at Chengdu Wanda City in China is said to be a near clone of Terran at Fantasialand. While that coaster is loved for its surrounding rock work and theming, I know many have been skeptical about it being cloned. Luckily, it appears that All Speeds is going to be themed beautifully and will be an overall excellent addition and marquee attraction for this new Chinese theme park. Barracuda at Ocean Paradise in China is a coaster I'm surprised no one is talking about. It looks absolutely fantastic and almost like a spiritual successor to Fahrenheit at Hershey Park. Despite the traditional next-gen Intamin track design, Barracuda is going to use the old box track that can be found on rides like Maverick, Millennium Force, and of course Fahrenheit as well. The layout of this coaster is going to be quite a bit larger than Fahrenheit's, which is already pretty substantial, so in general, I think this coaster is going to be a real sleeper hit of 2021. Big Dipper at Luna Park Sydney in Australia. The world's first Intamin Hot Racer is going to pay homage to the park's old aero looping coaster, which was also named Big Dipper. This will be the first launch single rail coaster in the world and will be Luna Park's first coaster since the aforementioned Big Dipper opened in 1995. While it may not look as crazy as the RMC Raptors, that's completely fine by me. They are very different from one another while also having a similar track design, but it looks like it'll stand on its own as a very fun and enjoyable coaster. 
Bolt at the Mardi Gras Carnival Cruise Line, originally departing in Florida, will be the first ever roller coaster at sea. In other words, it's literally a major coaster atop a cruise ship. Crazy, right? It's already begun its testing phase and is ready to open as soon as cruises are able to resume operation. I think Bolt is going to be a very fun ride as is, but the view of ocean water for miles is going to make it one of the most surreal coaster experiences in the entire world. Deceptic Coaster at Universal Studios Beijing in China is actually going to be a clone of the Incredible Hulk Coaster at Universal's Islands of Adventure in Florida. There are two key differences though, the first of which being the theme. Deceptic Coaster will be themed around Transformers rather than the Incredible Hulk. Also, it'll feature B&M's first pair of sit-down trains with vest restraints, which I'm not crazy about. Nonetheless, it shouldn't take away from the experience too much, and I'm sure it'll be a big crowd pleaser at this park. Dragon Coaster at Legoland New York, the newest Legoland park set to open later this year will be the third installation in America, and upon opening, the park will have two roller coasters, the largest of which being Dragon Coaster. Despite being manufactured by Zero, it looks to be one of the larger family coaster models they've built, and as a whole, I'm sure the kids will definitely love it. Dragon Fire at Doha Oasis Quest in Qatar Dragonfire is a coaster that I've heard literally not a single enthusiast talk about, but it's going to the Middle Eastern country of Qatar and will actually be a very substantial ride. Built by Premier Rides, the ride will be a shuttle coaster with two inversions and a max height of 196.9 That's going to be huge considering it's a part of a new indoor park and a shopping mall, but seriously, Dragonfire looks like it'll be one of the best coasters ever built by Premier Rides and easily the largest roller coaster in the country's history. Dragon Slayer at Adventureland Iowa is going to be the first SNS mini free spin, as well as North America's first fourth dimensional coaster at a family owned park. This is the park's answer to a replacement of their old Hopkins looping coaster, Dragon, and while I know not everyone is super happy about the ride they chose, I feel like it's leaving the park a lot of space for something bigger in the future. 11th Roller Coaster at Great Singdong Taurus World in China is a knockoff Intamin multi-looping coaster. It almost looks kind of similar to their 10 inversion or 8 inversion coaster model, but as a whole, I'm not too sure what to make of this ride. I'm fairly certain it'll be a big crowd pleaser, but I know enthusiasts who get to ride it probably won't be the biggest fan. Emperor at SeaWorld San Diego in California is going to be the largest coaster in my home park's history, and as well as that will be the tallest and fastest dive coaster on the west coast. For a dive coaster, the layout looks pretty exciting and well paced, and I just can't wait for this ride to open. I may not be the hugest fan of dive coasters, but the fact that SeaWorld San Diego is getting something this big and original is something I can't help but be excited about. Flight of the Hippogriff at Universal Studios Beijing in China arguably shouldn't be on this list and some could call it a kiddie coaster or a tame family coaster, but me personally, I think it'll be a very fun ride. It's supposed to be extremely similar to the Flight of the Hippogriff we have here at Universal Studios Hollywood and I actually found that ride to be very fun and underrated when I wrote it in 2019. Fun Coaster at Funplex in South Carolina is going to be one of those SBF Big Air Hamster Wheel coasters, similar if not identical to the one we saw at Iapa in 2019. This coaster has been built in a few locations throughout America and just looks incredibly bizarre and nauseating. Another SBF Hamster Wheel opening this year is Gravitrax, which is going to be located at a park I'm not even going to try to pronounce in Germany. Not much is known about this specific installation, but it will be the first of the Big Air model outside of the US. Hurricane at Forest World in China is going to open as one of Mock Ride's most ambitious projects yet. This coaster is going to have an LSM launch, a 203.4 foot tall top hat, and five massive inversions. Three of these inversions will be interlocked together and with the right side of the top hat, making that spaghetti ball of track the first Cobra roll to interlock with another inversion, or any other element for that matter. The fact that it's going to be able to do this is proof of how gargantuan this ride is going to be. Hurricane is going to be an amazing standout attraction for this park, and I'm sure it'll end up being one of Mock's best creations. Icebreaker at SeaWorld Orlando in Florida is supposedly the fourth Skyrocket model, and coincidentally, this one will feature a quadruple swing launch. This basically means that it'll launch back and forth four times through the same section of track. The layout looks like it'll be a whole lot of fun, and the transitionings look pretty abrupt for a premier coaster, so I'm definitely looking forward to eventually riding this in the future. One of the most anticipated new roller coasters opening next year is Iron Gwazi at Busch Gardens Tampa in Florida. Simply put, Iron Gwazi is going to end up being one of the greatest coasters on the planet, and I don't think that's arguable. The ride stands at a whopping 206 feet, tying Zodra's record for the tallest hybrid coaster in the world. As well as this, it'll feature the steepest drop on a hybrid coaster at 91 degrees, technically making it beyond vertical, and the sheer scale of this layout is what I really think is going to make Iron Gwazi one of the best rides on Earth. Jersey Devil Coaster at Six Flags Great Adventure in New Jersey is another one of the most anticipated coasters opening soon, at least in America. The ride is an RMC Raptor coaster that has a very different layout to the original Raptors at California's Great America and Six Flags Fiesta Texas. If Jersey Devil has the same pacing as the first two Raptors, it's really going to be something special, and I can't wait to ride this coaster. 
John Wick Open Contract at Motiongate Dubai was originally built for the now-canceled Six Flags Dubai. The ride is an SNS 40 free spin themed around the John Wick movie franchise and is set to debut at Motiongate Dubai in 2021. Many of the parks in Dubai are known for their incredible theming, so I'm sure this ride will in fact be decked out in some awesome thematics. Konda at Wallaby, Belgium is what I'm anticipating the most out of all of these. Konda's layout looks so incredible that if it doesn't end up being one of the top 5 roller coasters on earth, I'd genuinely be surprised. Manufactured by Intamin, this hypercoaster will be the tallest, fastest, and largest coaster in the Benelux, a region comprised of Belgium, the Netherlands, and Luxembourg. Believe me when I tell you that Konda is going to give some absolutely astonishing rides. I cannot wait to see the reviews of this thing. Krampus Expedition at Nigloland in France is going to be a mock rides water coaster with a substantial amount of theming. From the construction images I've seen, the track looks like it's shaped differently from all the other mock water coasters. I'm not sure if this will impact the ride experience at all, but perhaps it'll make the coaster smoother if otherwise. I honestly don't know a ton about this ride, but it'll definitely be a welcome addition to France's portfolio of rides and roller coasters. SeaWorld Australia's largest roller coaster in their park's history will be Leviathan, a gravity group wood coaster that looks like it'll have an awesome, compact layout. What sets this ride apart from other coasters from the manufacturer and in typical Australia style, the back car will be doing something slightly different from the rest. With backwards-facing seats, I can't imagine how disorienting it'll feel. For only four coasters, SeaWorld Australia's lineup is really well-rounded now. They'll have an awesome one-two punch, including this and Jet Rescue. Mine Roller Coaster at Great Singdong Tourist World in China is it's a Golden Horse Mine Train with two lift hills and some surrounding rock work. Despite the hate Golden Horse coasters receive, I've seen a lot of images of their mine trains in China that have genuinely impressed me, and this one is not an exception at all. Mission Ferrari at Ferrari World in Dubai has been delayed year after year after year, but the park has finally started teasing indirectly that the coaster could finally make its debut in 2021. It's set to be the first Dynamic Attractions SFX coaster, and man is it going to be complex. The ride is believed to have at least two inversions, five LSM launches, a drop track, a tilt track, and 3D movie screens. We really don't know too much about what to expect out of the ride experience, but it's definitely looking like it'll be worth the wait when it opens. Bollinger and Mabillard's first new inverted coaster since Banshee in 2014 will be Sweden's very own Monster at Grunaland. If you thought this park crammed a lot of cool rides in the years past, you haven't seen anything yet. I'm shocked that they found a way to fit in this compact invert, but honestly, compact inverts are typically better than the large-scale counterparts, so I'm sure this will be a very fun coaster when it opens. Movie Park Studio sounds more like a theme park name than a roller coaster name, but in reality, this will be a new Intamin multi-dimensional coaster located at Movie Park Germany. Not much is known about this ride since it was just recently announced, but what we do know is that it'll be a family coaster built by Intamin with a forwards launch, backwards launch, and a turntable similar to the one found on Sandy's Blasting Bronco in New Jersey. Namazu at Volcania in France is going to be this absolutely beautiful park's first ever roller coaster, and based off of construction images, it appears to be an Intamin family multi-launch coaster with a drop track, which is awesome. Intamin always succeeds in making some of the greatest family coasters out there, and I'm sure this one will be absolutely no exception. Next up on our list is Now You See Me High Roller at Motiongate Dubai, which is a Mauer spinning coaster that's said to have a non-inverting loop on RCDB. I have no idea how that's even possible on this ride model, but nonetheless, the ride looks like it'll be very fun and well-themed. Pantheon at Busch Gardens Williamsburg in Virginia is one of the coasters I'm most excited to ride this year. It's an intimate blitz coaster with tons of amazing elements and an absolutely incredible looking layout. Without a doubt, it'll be the best coaster in Busch Gardens Williamsburg's history and it's not even close. An announcement that surprised the entire community was that the incredibly tiny Dino's Wonder Wheel Park in Brooklyn, New York would invest in a Vacoma family invert named Phoenix to kick off a season of smiles and opportunity. The ride is going to have a unique layout that'll differ from the others we've been seeing as of recent. That'll definitely be a great addition to New York City's lineup, and I definitely look forward to hearing more about its construction progress. Much like Mission Ferrari in Dubai, Primordial at Lagoon in Utah is a coaster that hasn't been confirmed to open this year, but nonetheless, it's going to be a very cool ride. From what I've gathered, it'll probably be a similar ride to a coaster like Wonder Mountain's Guardian at Canada's Wonderland in Vaughan, Ontario, Canada, but maybe on a bit of a larger scale. Sons of Anarchy at Skyworlds Malaysia is supposedly going to be the world's first dynamic attractions dual power coaster. I barely know anything about this ride or its coaster model, but I'd imagine it'll be a technologically advanced attraction. Space Factory at Yamayuri Land in Japan will be Gerslauer's first ever inverted coaster, and it seems to me like it'll stay mostly indoors. It's something very different from what we've seen out of the manufacturer, so I'm looking forward to learning more about it over the coming months. Steel Typen at Dream World Australia is a coaster that we do know a lot about. Steel Typen will be a mock rides launch coaster that'll be extremely similar to the Blue Fire clones. The one exception to this is that it'll feature a backwards twisted spike to increase the ride duration, making the launch a triple swing launch. Also, the back car is supposed to have spinning seats, so that's going to make the ride experience all the more crazy. 
Storm Chaser at Paltons Park in the UK is set to open in March as a mock spinning coaster and actually a clone of Sierra Sidewinder at Knott's Berry Farm, just with a different track design and golden paint job. The park it's in will benefit greatly from this attraction since it's a family park, but I'm sure it'll appeal to all members of the family too, as I find Sierra Sidewinder to be a pretty underrated coaster. Stunt Pilot at Silverwood in Idaho is the long-awaited RMC we've all wanted this park to get for years. I say this because of the park's close proximity to the company's manufacturing facility. The ride is going to be almost identical to Wonder Woman at Six Flags Fiesta Texas and Railblazer at California's Great America, but with one key difference. The train will be a couple rows longer, meaning the airtime and whip you'll experience on this ride will be godlike. This is going to be one hell of a ride and definitely an incredible addition to Idaho's only theme park. Super Glider at Skytropolis Indoor Theme Park in Malaysia is the dreaded Zamperla Valer coaster that might actually be one of the most hated roller coaster models in the world. The only reason it's being mentioned in this video is because it's cool to see a place like Malaysia getting more large scale coasters. Time Traveler at Plopsa Land Japan in Belgium, not to be confused with Time Traveler at Silver Dollar City in Missouri, is coincidentally the same coaster model as one another. It's not a problem since they are located halfway across the world from one another, but nonetheless, this coaster really stands on its own. The layout looks like it's going to feature some incredible elements, and between this and Konda, Belgium really is stepping up their coaster game this year. Triple Loop at Indiana Beach is the relocation of a coaster that we thought we'd never be able to ride again, and that attraction is Chimera at La Feria Chapultepec, Mexico. After the tragic accident that occurred in 2020, the coaster and its park were left standing but not operating with a future that appeared to be very questionable. But now we know that Indiana Beach's maintenance team are working to refurbish the attraction and give it a new home. This will easily be the largest coaster ever at this park, and even if it runs with trims again, it's going to remain one of the most intense coasters on the planet. You may be familiar with Dueling Dragons at Guangzhou Scenic Land in China, the crazy intimate dueling coaster that opened back in 2019. Twin Dragon at Oriental Neverland in China, opening this year, looks like Beijing Shivalai Amusement Equipment's answer to their version of the coaster. One could say it's a knockoff, and yeah, that's probably correct, but I have faith that it'll be a good coaster just because of how cool the dueling coaster design is on its sister coaster at Scenic Land. Velasa Coaster at Universal's Islands of Adventure in Florida. Themed to Jurassic World, Velasa Coaster is a highly anticipated intimate multi-launch coaster opening at the Universal Orlando Resort. The incredible looking layout combined with the ride's theming is going to be absolutely incredible and will make for one of the best ride experiences probably in the entire world. For years, Green Lantern First Flight at Six Flags Magic Mountain was frowned upon in the amusement industry for giving Intamin Zack Spins a bad look. Due to state and countrywide regulations, the ride appeared to be much more painful than the other Zack Spins, and because of its negative reputation, it was left standing but not operating for years at the park. Throughout 2020 and 2021, the ride is being relocated to La Ronde in Canada with a new name, Viper. Since it's now in Canada who have different regulations, I'm hoping the ride runs just as well as its Swedish counterpart at Gronalun, which most seem to really enjoy. Wandering Oak and Sliding Sleigh at Hong Kong Disneyland is Disney's answer to a Frozen-themed roller coaster. The ride looks like it'll be impeccably well-themed and will be a ton of fun. Vacoma family coasters are always the best that can be at Disney parks, and I think this one will be no exception at all. And lastly, Wings Over Rio at Skyworlds Malaysia is going to be themed around the movie Rio and will likely be a single rail inverted coaster similar to those built by Utah-based Setpoint Manufacturing. An example of Setpoint's ride designs can be found with Canopy Flyer at Universal Studios Singapore and the now defunct Roller Soaker at Hershey Park. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed part one of this mini series where I'm covering every single major new for 2021 roller coaster we can anticipate riding later this year. As always, please feel free to subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for part two of this video, hopefully dropping in just a couple days. Again, thanks for watching and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye guys.